let's spend a little bit of more time on the notion of positivity and the um, examples that we look at when we look at functions on a finite set x. So let's take another example where we take functions on x, functions on y, and let us look at what a positive map from c of y to cx gives us. Now, such a function is completely determined by what it does to the vectors, um, a basis of vectors here. Again, because this is just a, a linear function. So if we take our basis vector ey, then that gets mapped to f of ey. Now, f of ey is a function on x. So it itself is completely determined by its evaluation on elements of x. So we actually have a map here, back down to c, that just evaluates at x. And this is also a positive unital map. It's positive because if we take any positive function, then we know that its x component is going to be non-negative. And when we evaluate it, we'll get a non-negative number. And if we take the function 1, then it's 1 at the component of x, and therefore we get 1 here as well. So if we apply this evaluation, what we get is f of ey applied to x. Now, this is getting a little bit cluttered, but if we look at what this is saying, we have f, which is a positive unital map, and the evaluation, which is a positive unital map. What do we get? This gives us a map from cy to c given by evaluation at x precomposed with f itself. In other words, this is a state. But we already know what state looks like, what every state looks like on function on a function space. So this corresponds to a probability measure. on y. What do we want to call that probability measure? Well, let's just call that probability measure f subscript x. Therefore, to each x in x, we get an associated prob probability measure on y. Now that should sound familiar. That's exactly the definition of a stochastic map from x to y. In other words, positive unital maps between the C star algebras that are given by the function spaces on finite sets x and y correspond to stochastic maps. Now this tells us that given a positive unital map, we can construct an associated stochastic map. What about in the other direction? If you give me a stochastic map, how can I construct an associated map between these C star algebras? So for that, we're going to analyze a specific functor that takes us from finite sets, stochastic maps, and functions to the category of C star algebras, positive unital maps, and star homomorphisms. So this motivates Um, a specific functor that takes us from finite sets with stochastic maps to the category of C star algebras. And we're working with finite dimensional C star algebras. So let me just write finite dimensional C star algebras and positive maps. I'm just writing these words out so you kind of remember what categories we're talking about. And for technical reasons, notice that if we had a map from c of y to c of x, the direction of this stochastic map reversed. So for that reason, I'll put a little op here, which just means that when we apply this functor, we have to remember that the, what used to be the source is now the target of the associated morphism after we apply that functor. So what is this? So if you give me a finite set x, 
well, I need to construct a C star algebra for you. What is that C star algebra? We've already been looking at that C star algebra in an example. It's the C star algebra of functions on x. So no problem there. But now, if you give me a stochastic map from x to y, I have to produce for you a map from c. Now we're going to go in the opposite direction. So it's going to go from, I'm going to put this arrow backwards, it's going to go from cy to cx. And I'll call this capital F just for now because it's going to be very closely, I mean, it's going to be this, um, this positive um, unital map up here. So how do we define such a map? Well, we already know that this map is going to be completely determined by either what it does on the domain or what it does on the codomain. And if we look at this map, and then we look at this evaluation here on x, then the map f is the sum of all of these f evaluation x's. So if we take f, we plug in a function in y. We're going to look at the evaluation functions first, because that forms a basis of this as a vector space. This gives us a function on x. So let's evaluate that function at x. Let's set this to be equal to, take our stochastic map f and set it equal to this expression. So take the probability associated from going from x to the element y. This turns out to be a positive unital map. So if we extend this, extend f linearly, and what do I mean by that? I mean if you take a function here, then every function can be decomposed by looking at the associated numbers that the value of this function takes for each element y. And we define it this to be the sum over all y, by. So leave the coefficients alone and apply f to each of these terms. So that's what I mean by extending f linearly. So if we extend this function linearly, then f is a positive unital map from cy to cx. So now we've defined a functor on the objects and the morphisms. So it's a fact that this defines a functor But more is actually true. The construction that we gave here says that this functor is surjective on morphisms. So we say that the functor is full in that case. Which means surjective on HOM classes or HOM sets. Which means if I take two objects, x and y, and then I apply, and then I look at the set of morphisms in my category, which in this case are stochastic maps. And then if I look at the set of morphisms of positive maps between cy and cx, then that's a bijection. And we already know, sorry, not a bijection, that is a surjection. And we know that that's true because of this statement here the construction that we made given a positive unital map, we constructed a stochastic map from it. Now, it turns out that that's not only a surjection, it's also an injection. So this becomes a bijection. It is full and faithful. And faithful means injective on HOM sets. So the question is, why is it injective? So that basically says if we have two stochastic maps and we apply this functor to them, we get this associated stochastic map by this, sorry, we get the associated um, positive map given by this expression. If those two positive unital maps are equal, then the two stochastic maps had to be equal to begin with. But this part is very easy to see from this formula because 
we know exactly what all of these numbers are, and these numbers are determined by all of the elements x and y. So there's no variation that we can do here. If we had two different stochastic maps, then these, then there would exist at least one pair of x, y, where f, y, x is not equal to g, y, x, if we call that stochastic map g. And therefore, um, it's, it's easier to see that it's a faithful functor. So this defines a fully faithful functor from finite stochastic, from sets with stochastic maps to finite dimensional C star algebras and positive maps. So then you can ask, okay, well, finite stochastic maps, we have finite stochastic maps here, and we also have C star algebras on this side. In the special case of a deterministic map, so when that stochastic map corresponds to a function, you can ask, what is the corresponding morphism we get here? So let's look at that specific example. Now, if f is a function, what happens to this associated stochastic map here? Then fyx, because it's a function, this is actually the Kronecker delta, when you take f of x and you get y here. So it's whenever f of x equals y, that's when that gives us a non-zero entry. And that's the only time it's non-zero, it equals 1. And so the question that we have to answer is, once we define our positive map using this formula and combining it with this one, the question is, is, if ca is capital F a star homomorphism? We already know it's unital. And that follows from stochasticity. I didn't mention that, but that follows from the fact that this is stochastic. Unitatily means that if I plug in the identity function here, that's the sum of all of these EYs. And because f, of sti f is stochastic, the sum of over all Ys here is equal to 1. So we're not going to analyze unitality since that's easy. What we'll do is look at the star homomorphism property. In other words, is f a star homomorphism? And because we've analyzed what the product of two functions looks like, we know that it's completely determined by what happens point-wise. And therefore, we can look at what happens when we take the product of EY with another EY prime and analyze that example. And if we can show that that splits off when f is a function, then we know that we have a star homomorphism. So let's look at that case. So f of EY times EY prime. For Y and Y prime could be different, might be the same, doesn't matter. So in this case, we know what this equals. This is equal to delta Y, Y prime, EY, for instance. And we can pull that delta out. So this is delta Y, Y prime, F of EY. That just follows from the product of these two specific functions. Now by the definition of f of ey, this is equal to delta y y prime times delta y f of x. On the other hand, we also have f of ey, f of ey prime. We can use the definition of f here, but this time we'll have two of these expressions. Oh, my bad. I forgot a sum over all x here. This is ex, right, because we're plugging this into all, all of these different x's. So this is a sum over all x in x. OK, so going back here, we similarly have two sums over all x's. So this equals sum over all x and x prime. Now, for f of ey, we have, uh, here it is, delta y f x times e x, but I'll put that e x at the end. I'll put it next to the e x prime times the associated Kronecker delta from here. So this is e y prime f of x prime. Now, we have all of these Kronecker deltas, so we can perform this sum more explicitly. After, of course, we combine these two, because this is nothing but delta xx prime ex. And so when we sum over that variable x, one of the variables, let's say x prime, all of the x primes become an x. So we have a sum over all x, delta y 
f of x delta y prime f of x times our unit vector ex. Now what this is telling us, because this f of x is the same here, it tells us that f of x equals y equals y prime. So we can actually pull out a delta y y prime out of here. So we have delta y y prime. Let's make sure, yeah, you can still see this. So we have a delta y y prime times a sum over all x delta y fx squared. Now that delta, chronic or delta, is reminding us that um, we get exactly this original expression back, times ex. And the chronic or delta squared is itself because it's always going to be either 1 or 0. If it's 0, the square of that is 0. If it's 1, the square of that is 1. So this is exactly equal to this expression. So this tells us that F is actually a star homomorphism, that capital F is a star homomorphism whenever F is a function. It turns out, though I won't prove this part too, so this tells us that if we start off with a function, we get a, a star homomorphism, but now if we start with a star homomorphism, can you prove that the corresponding um, stochastic map is always a function? And that'll follow from a sim similar faithfulness argument that we sketched out earlier. And in conclusion, this actually tells us a really awesome thing about the relationship between probability theory and algebra. And let me sketch that out in a big diagram. So it says, the category of finite sets and stochastic maps, and the category of finite sets with ordinary functions. So first of all, every deterministic map is an example of a stochastic map. So we have an inclusion from sets, from sets and functions to finite sets and stochastic maps. And we also constructed fully faithful functors from finite sets and stochastic maps to finite dimensional C star algebras and positive maps. Sorry, there's a little overlap here. And finite dimensional C star algebras and star homomorphisms. And each of these functors are fully faithful, and we have inclusions in both of these directions. And in fact, this entire diagram commutes as well. And on the top of this diagram, we have probability theory. On the bottom of this diagram, we sort of have deterministic dynamics. On the left-hand side, we have our usual notions of probability theory. And on the right-hand side, we have our notions of algebraic formulations of probability, namely in terms of states and positive maps between those states. And the right-hand side, because C star algebras can also be non-commutative, we can look at matrix algebras, for instance, positive maps between them, and star homomorphisms between them, we can use the fact that these two categories sit inside of even bigger ones. In fact, I didn't even write this, but um, these maps, these functors are an equivalence when restricted to commutative, finite dimensional commutative C star algebras. And then we can use these two categories, which are much bigger. They include all of the non commutative algebras as well that are C star algebras. And we can take our ideas from probability theory and look at what that looks like and transfer that to the context of non commutative C star algebras.